In today's video, I want to demonstrate how easy it is to use Smart Slider 3 alongside WooCommerce to create your own custom carousel that will display products you want with a link through and any other information you want for that product completely and utterly dynamically. So let's just jump over into WordPress and take a look at how we can do all of that with Smart Slider 3. Hi, I'm Paul C and welcome to WP Tuts where I show you how to create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon to be notified of our weekly new content as soon as it's added to the channel. Okay, so we've jumped into Smart Slider 3 and we're now ready to start creating our new slider. You can see I'm seeing the dashboard at the moment, so we can now go through and just click on either new slider or template library, or we can go through and we can edit any of the previous slides that we've created. We're gonna click on new slider, That'll then take us into the Create Slider section, where we can name our slider. So we're going to call this WooCommerce. And we leave the dimensions as they are. Now, underneath that, you can see you've got a range of presets that we can use as the basis for our slider. Now, we're going to come down and we're going to use the Carousel option. And this is going to allow us to have three products side by side, but still be able to slide through and view additional products. In our instance, nine products in total. So we click on Carousel and we click on Create. Once we've done that, that'll go through and it now allows us to start creating the actual content and layout of our slider. Now you can see we can go through and create new slides, choose from a slide library, and so on. We've also got this little option that's pretty much semi-hidden away, which it says create slide, and then we've got a drop down arrow. Click on there, we want create dynamic slides. Once we do that, that's gonna take us through and ask us, well, what's the source you want to use? We're gonna come down and choose products by filter for WooCommerce. That'll allow us to go through now and filter out the products we do or don't want to include in our slider. Now bear in mind we are restricting this to only nine products, so it's only going to pull in the nine products or the first nine products that we choose. So you can see we've got category, we've got tags, limit, and so on. All I'm interested in is to come down to the slide section. We're going to set nine slides. We're going to leave the cache expiration to 24 hours, which means that if there's anything added in a 24-hour period, it won't be updated with any new products. It's going to wait 24 hours before it refreshes that cache. You can obviously change that to any value you want. We're still going to click on View Records, and we're going to see all the records that are found based upon the filter criteria we just set up. So you can see there's all our products with all the different information we can pull in from there. And at the top of each one of these different sections, you can see we've got a short code that's inside these little curly parentheses. These are the short codes you can use inside Smart Slider 3. But we don't need to remember those. We can just basically pull those in just using a click option. And we'll take a look at that further through this video. So we'll click and close that down. We're happy with everything in the filter section. We'll click on Save. Once that's saved, it's then going to take us over to a preview of what our slider looks like, which we can start then making amendments and adjusting and editing it any way we want to. So this is the mock-up of what our slider, our carousel slider, is going to look like with three products displayed. As you can see, it all currently looks just a little bit of a mess. But we've got a lot of control over this. We can effectively delete everything and start again, or we can just edit what's already in here. You can see it's already pulling in the relevant dynamic information, so each one of these is different. So, how do we start to edit this? Well, quite easily. We can come in and we can just choose any of these different sections. You can see we've got the title of the product, and we can come over to the right-hand side. You can see we've now got a context option which allows us to come in and adjust anything we want. So if we want to adjust the font size, we can easily do that. If we want to adjust the color, we can do that. Whole range of different things that we can do on there. So for this example, let's just simply drag this up to the top, pop that in there, make it a little larger again, just so it stands out. Make sure that it's centralized and you can see it snaps and we get guidelines on there which is very very nice if you are working within uh, smart slider 3. you can also switch things between content and canvas to allow you to have free reign or to allow it to sort of snap to different areas whichever you think is the best for the way you want to work so we can come in and we can say we want to take this for example and we'll just say we want to change the color on there and we'll set that to be a green color we'll also make that a little heavier so we say semi bold and again let's just come back and adjust the size on that a little bit better and then just realign it to the center okay so now we've got the price at the bottom let's make that a little bit smaller so again we'll just drag the size down to get the size we want that looks pretty cool we'll drag that over to that so actually let's just drag that up underneath our price uh, underneath our title and we'll set that to be red or reddish kind of color 
Okay, so there's the basics of what we want to do. Now let's drop in a buy now button at the bottom. So you can see at the moment we've got this sort of semi-transparent strip. Let's just delete that. Now even though it doesn't show up on the other two slides, anything we do in this sort of template area is going to affect every other part of the slide throughout the entire slider. So you're only editing one, but that preset sort of layout will apply to everything. Okay, so let's come over, let's click on button layer. You can see that drops a button in there. Let's just drag that down to the bottom. What we're going to do now is you can see at the moment it says more, which obviously we don't want that. We want to say buy now. At the moment, the link is a null link, and you can see that we can get rid of that. But you'll see when we take our mouse over different boxes, we get this little blue box pop up in the corner, this blue little label that says variable. We click on that. We can then use any of those variables I showed you earlier on when we previewed the actual data that we're going to be finding. And you can see we've got a whole range of different sections. Now, this will change the variable based upon the type of slider you created. So if it's a post slider, the information will be different. What we want in this example is the URL and click insert. So what that does now is that makes that button a live button that'll take you directly to that product so you can buy it or you can take a look at any of the options that are associated with it. We can still come in and style this any way you want. So let's just say you want to put a border radius and we'll put 20 in there, for example. And you can see we now get a pill shaped button. If we want to change the color on that from green and we'll just change that to be red, easily done. All pretty cool. Okay, so we say we're happy with that. Let's just click on save on there. And let's come up and now let's preview that. And there we go. There's our slider. You can see all the different options we've just set up in there are all configured. If we want to sort of scroll over to the next section, we can do that. But the problem we have is that unless you know you can scroll over or you see these little buttons at the bottom, you may think it's only three products. So we're not limited to doing things like this. We can just jump back into this. We'll go to the top and we'll click on slider. Once we do that, that'll take us back into all the different options we've got to control the slider. And if we scroll down at the bottom, you can see we've got a range of different options for the arrows. At the moment, it's set to show no arrow, but we can easily come in and we can put the sort of partial image on the left and right hand side, or we can use normal arrows, however we want to set this up. So I'm going to just choose this option. You can see then we've got additional options. So we can control the position of those. We can change the text on different ones. We can change the arrows, whole range of different things. Come to bullets, and you can see at the moment we've got these sort of squares which don't necessarily look that nice. So what we can do is we can take those off completely if we wanted to, or we can put in one of these little dots. Again, whatever you want to make it lay out the way that you're happy with it. Once we're happy with that, click on preview, and you can see now there's our arrows, there's our little circles, and we can still control this by sliding left and right with the mouse button. So pretty cool. Now I've shown you how you can just basically take the template that's being created when you set up your slider to start off with. But what about if you want to start pretty much completely from scratch? Well, we can do that too very easily. Let's come back in and start editing our slider. So it'll bring us back into our preview. And what we can do is we can just come in and we can delete everything we want off your buttons, everything. We can come to the background, clear that from there. So you can see now we've got a completely blank canvas. We just jump over to the settings. We'll make sure that there's no thumbnail, no URL. Everything is now completely taken away. What we can do now is we can use the options on the left-hand side. You can see we've got things like heading, layer, text, images, buttons, and so on. We've even got a, a layer or structure section. But this little plus gives us a ton of different options. If we click on there, you can see we've got a range of different tools or different widgets we can drag in and use. So what we could do is we could use an image or an image box, which will have a bit of text underneath it, or an image area. Now, because we might not know the size and the shape of the image we want to work with, if we use the image area, we get a little bit more flexibility over how the image is displayed in there. So let's just drag that over, drop that on there, and you can see we now get the box, which we can grab and we can resize any way we want. So we can say we'll put that so it kind of covers should we say, most of the layout. We'll clear out the default value for the image, and the placeholder still stays there even though the image is gone. We come over to the right-hand side and click on Variable. We do it like we did last time. We'll just come in and we'll choose Image this time and click Insert. You can see that now displays the image inside that area being dy dynamically pulled in from our database. So there's the first part. Okay, so once we've done that, let's put a little background color in this bottom section, and then let's put the button and the price and everything else on there. So again, we're going to come to the green arrow to add a layer. We've got area under the advanced section. We're going to click on that. That'll drop the little area in there, and you can see that's now created a black layout square. So let's just resize that just by using these grab handles in any of the corners. 
or any of the sort of main sections. You can see we can apply gradients to this if we want to. So if we want to set this to a gradient, we can apply any kind of angle we want. We can adjust the color for the start and for the end. And you can see it's very easy to create a gradient effect on there. You can even use transparency if you want to. So again, really cool. Let's just get rid of the gradients on there. We'll say off on that. So we leave it as a solid black, that's cool. Next up, we're gonna come over and we're gonna to click to add a layer. We'll choose heading. You can see that puts a heading in there and it's predefined and picked up any style we might have used before. Now, if we come over to the right-hand side where we've got this little context box again, let me bring that in. You can see that I've got two variables in there. Now I've got title and price. This is something I wanna show you. If I delete those and I put a variable in, so let's just start off by putting the title in there and clicking insert you'll see that's put exactly as you'd expect. Now, if I wanted to sort of append that, I'll prepend that by putting the price at the end of it. I'll put a space and a period in there, click variable, and I'll put price in. And we'll say insert. But you'll notice that the first part of it has been removed. Now, this is one of those areas that's a little frustrating when it comes to dealing with Smart Slider 3. It would be nice if you could just build those up as you wanted to. So let's come back into variable. We'll put the title back in there, insert, We'll put our little period in there. And I know that for this example, it's the curly bracket, then price, then close the curly bracket. And you can see that's immediately replaced by the information that's been pulled in by the variable. So when you know these, you can manually put those in there yourself. So you can still get past that little limitation, but it would be nice in a future update to see the ability to create and add multiple variables into one particular variable box. Okay, so that's that part done. Let's remove the actual variable for any links and things on there. So we've got the title, we've got our black box on there. So the final thing we wanna do is just drop in our button and we're gonna do exactly the same. You can see that's kept the styling from the previous example where we edited that. And what we're gonna do is you can see it's also kept in there the URL, which is the variable. So we can say, well, we don't need to do all that again. We'll just position that where we want, close this down and hit save. And we've now created our own version based from scratch. So let's come back into our smart slider and let's just hit preview. So we've now created our own version, our own layout built from scratch. And as you can see, if we scroll through this, it doesn't matter about the size of the image or the dimensions, it's gonna fit inside that box with no problems. Very easy. Well, that's what I wanted to show you. I wanted to take you through and show you how you can create these WooCommerce dynamic sliders for yourself. Now, you need the pro version of Smart Slider 3 to get access to all these different tools. Highly recommend it. It's a great piece of software. If you are considering purchasing it, please use the affiliate link in the description below. It gives a small percentage back to the channel and doesn't cost you a single penny more. Well, as always, if you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, please pop this in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, and hit the bell icon to be notified every time new content is added to the channel. As always, until next time, take care.